Hi everyone, this is Tanner. Welcome back to another episode of Comics to Cinema Conversations. Today we have a bit of a unique video. We're going to be discussing the non-MCU um, Spider-Man films. So the three films directed by Sam Raimi, and then the two amazing Spider-Man films directed by Mark Webb. Um, I am have my good co-host Joe with me here today. Hello. And um, Joe, you're a really big fan of these movies. So for today's episode, I'm actually going to let you, um, for the Raimi films, say your take first, because I know these films are really close to you. For me, um, we'll start with the first one made in 2002. You know, growing up, I never saw these movies. I actually haven't seen them. I, I saw them all the way through for the first time last summer. But I just don't have the same knowledge of these films. Um, that Joe has. So Joe, if you want to start with the first Spider-Man film of Sam Raimi's and so your thoughts kind of on the film and then the memories you uh, have for it. Sure. So the first Spider-Man film was directed by Sam Raimi, obviously, and he did the rest of the original Spider-Man trilogy, which I, I believe was supposed to be a couple more movies, but he kind of got cut short and only made three. But so, anyways, this movie is probably probably closer to the Ultimate Spider-Man universe than the normal Spider-Man universe. Because, like, for example, he has the uh, the web shooters. He doesn't have web shooters. They're like uh, the uh, the webs come out of his wrists, which I believe is also from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. And he's a little, uh, Peter Parker is played by Tobey Maguire, obviously. And as the orphaned high schooler, he's pretty similar to your usual Peter Parker, maybe a little older than some people would prefer, but it never really bothered me because they're only in high school for the first maybe half hour of the movie at most. But yeah. And then you also have Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane Watson, who I know she's almost more of a, a Gwen Stacy type character than Mary Jane because she's not really the like party animal from the comics. She's more of like a stereotypical superhero movie love interest. Uh, James Franco as Harry Osborne, he does a good job. Uh, Uncle Ben as Cliff Robertson. I mean, Chris Robertson is Uncle Ben, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, I feel like he's kind of set the standard for the character and is what uh, most people think of when they think of Uncle Ben. I mean, they even used his voice in the uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie at the very beginning, which I thought was a cool touch. And then probably the most iconic performance from this first movie is uh, Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin who is one of my favorite superhero movie villains because he's he's a little more uh, sympathetic than the Green Goblin usually is, but I, I actually like that change. Usually Green Goblin's kind of just straight evil, but here they have, he still cares about Harry quite a bit more than the usual Norman Osborn character would, but I like that change personally. But yeah, overall, I really like this movie. I think it's a perfect uh, superhero origin film. It introduces all the characters perfectly and sets up a lot of stuff for future movies. Yeah, I just I think this is a very good origin movie and a very good first movie for Spider-Man in general. So you brought up a lot of good points, Joe. Um, this film, I think, really... I'm going to choose my words carefully. I think it's the best movie in live action that feels like a comic book. Films like The Dark Knight, Avengers Endgame, Infinity War are better movies based off comic books. But I think this movie really translates the comic book feeling to the big screen. A lot of that has to do with Sam Raimi. He has a unique style that I really like. It's stylized, but it's not too over the top or it gets annoying. And I really like him as the director. I like the overall feel on this movie um and the theme of spider-man i guess he's just kind of very much golden age version of spider-man like he's the very much 
kind of normal Spider-Man we're used to. I love Tobey Maguire, Maguire in the role. I think he really fits the version of Peter Parker. One thing I really like about him is he's kind of nervous and timid. You know, yes, he's nerdy, but I think one thing of Peter is that he should be timid. I think that's something that Maguire does a great job of in the role. He kind of portrays that nervousness, which I think is a very underrated aspect. I think the elements of the origin story are nice. You know, him getting bitten. The Uncle Ben scene is really well done. The whole wrestling scene, I think, is kind of forgotten nowadays. But I think it fits well in the movie. And I like the Spider-Man we get. We'll talk about this probably for this movie. But a lot of people don't like how he doesn't quip. And for me, it just doesn't bother me a whole ton. Willem Dafoe, as you said, is perfect as the character. I want to get your thoughts real quick on the suit. People like it looks like a Power Ranger. Power Rangers costume it never bothered me. I like kind of the metallic slick design to it and like the yellow eyes. I think it kind of gives it that menacing vibe. But I just want to hear your thoughts real quick on uh Green Goblin suit. Yeah, the suit design never really bothered me either. Um it could maybe they could have added some like purple into it to make it look a little more like the comic green goblin. But I thought it was a pretty good like modernization of the usual green goblin yeah, design. Man. I know I know that they uh they attempted to use a practical green goblin mask, like that looks more like the comic ones that you could find pictures of and like from a screen test, but I don't think it really would have made sense for the Green Goblin to have looked like that. So personally, I like the armored look. Yeah, I think some purple been going like on the shoulder pads, the kneecap area, but I like it. it never bothered me. And I think in a way it's supposed to look kind of cheesy. I think that's the whole thing they're going for. Like, oh, you know, um, Norman turns mad and now he's running around in this suit. He didn't have a ton of time to really like put on finishing touches. Uh, as you can see, for those watching um, the video version, yeah, there's an animatronic headgear version. It just looks kind of like something you would find in the Halloween store. So I think they did the best direction for the character. Um, besides um, the two stars in the movie, because I think this movie is very much remembered for those two characters. Um, I think that um i i think there's some other, there's a great supporting cast here um i really like kirsten dunce as mary jane watson i think she's become very underrated in um kind of the movie culture as this movie ages which is unfortunate because i really like her portrayal um yes there are some things that are very cliche about her but i like how she is a character that has confidence and gains it you know, over the film, she, you know, is not afraid to talk about Peter, about issues she has. She pursues her dreams. Um, and she's a very crucial character throughout the three movies. And I think that Kirsten Dunst is able to put her own twist on Mary Jane. Um, yes, she's not the party animal, but that doesn't bother me a whole ton. I think there's still elements of Mary Jane. Um, James Frank as Harry's good. There's not a lot to say. One thing that always kind of bothered me was rosemary harris as aunt may i i'm not the biggest fan of her portrayal in this movie it feels very much like the standard aunt may i think it gets to the point where like everything she says is this like quote like on a picture frame and kind of becomes a bit um annoying and she just doesn't seem that human but cliff robertson as ben parker really i think nails that down oh uh, we also forgot jk simmons as j joma jameson I love him in this movie. Um, this film has a, has a lot of character in it. I'm going to share this one picture. But, Joe, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but the Thanksgiving scene where Peter's clothes are green and purple like the Green Goblins, Norman's clothes are red and blue like Spider-Man, and then Harry is wearing a mix of the colors. Um, I just love the details in this movie for that. Do you know what I'm talking about, Joe? I don't know if you've seen it or not. Yeah, I, I think I've seen the image you're talking about. It's a cool design choice. Yeah, and just the little details like that. The iconic score, which I do like. I don't love it as much as other people do. There's just a lot of nice details in this film. Um, so, yeah, I don't have that much else to say. 
Um, Joe, do you have anything else to add for the movie? Only thing I can think of that I didn't really talk about that you touched on was just the 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 style of the movie. Just it has that like that inherent cheesiness without going like too over the top like other movies have done. It's like just enough that it feels like a comic book without being too in your face. Yeah, um, and I love the opening, you know, the title cards and how it has kind of that epic music playing. Yes, the font's a bit cheesy, but the movie kind of knows where it's at. It doesn't go too dramatic, but has those moments like, okay, I get the point. Also, I'm going to probably butcher his last name, but Joe Manganello is in this movie as Flash Thompson. He plays Deathstroke in the DCEU, and he's been in other films. That was cool learning that. Um, I think even someone like Flash Thompson, like they're good in the movie, they're that stereotypical bully, bully, but everyone in this film, I feel like as the character of Spider-Man, which is the point of a Spider-Man movie, I think that this is still the film that's the definitive version of the character from the comics that most people know. Um, I like the editing too. I, I think that that's something that's a bit underrated. And I like the fight scenes in this movie. Um, there's some good moments in there, like the ending moments with Peter and Norman. I think that's a really intense scene and the way that plays out affects the other two films. So I think that's a really great scene. The bridge scene seems like straight from the comic book pages. There's all the good set design in this film. So it's just really well paced. I think out of all three, this film it flows the best. I don't think it is the best, but I think it's the most rewatchable. I'm going to go 8.5 out of 10 uh, for Spider-Man 1. Um, Joe, if you want to give your final thoughts and your grade. You touched on the uh, that final fight between uh, Norman and Peter, and I have to agree with you that that fight is one of my favorite like final superhero movie showdowns just because it feels so almost realistic like all you can really feel all the punches and the the impacts and stuff like that just something about the way it's shot and the sound design and everything just works really well for me in that scene but yeah overall i'd give this movie a nine out of ten just because i think it's a really great origin movie yeah i i mean i i agree with that i would go half a score lower but i can totally see why um, next up, we have Spider-Man 2 released in 2004. This film is highly praised as one of the best comic book movies ever. Um, it has very much of the same returning cast, but some new people in here, such as Alfred Molina. Joe, if you want to start out giving your thoughts on this film. So I think Spider-Man 1 is a little more consistent of a movie. But Spider-Man 2, to me, has higher highs and also lower lows. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a number of moments in this film that are some of the most iconic Spider-Man moments just in general of the franchise. And that it also has some moments that are come across as a little, a little too over the top. But overall, I think that the highs make up for the lows in this movie. And despite some of my issues with it, it's definitely one of the best uh, Spider-Man movies and superhero movies in general. Do you want to mention some of the high highs and some of the low lows that you mentioned? Sure. Uh, so I'd say some of the, the higher moments the are, the, the biggest one I can think of is the, the train fight scene. Just everything about that whole scene with from the fight on the train between Spider-Man and Doc Ock to um, the moment where he's able to stop the train from crashing and then he's surrounded by all the New Yorkers who reveal, who promise to not reveal his secret. Just everything about that scene just feels like perfect Spider-Man. There's like a perfect Spider-Man moment. Uh, some other really great scenes that I can think of are um, sorry, just give me a second. 
the uh, everything about the ending, while it's a little maybe a little too too big for uh, what this universe kind of has in terms of details, it feels like a little too cosmic. I feel what it does for the characters is really great in terms of uh, Spider-Man and, and Mary Jane kind of coming together and um, Doc Ock's sacrifice is really well done. And also the, the ending where Peter and Mary Jane finally get together, I feel is also very iconic. Yeah, so... so those, are, those are some of the, the highs that I can think of. Yeah, so I really like what you said. This movie has high highs below lows. I agree. One thing I love about this movie is that it just goes. Um, this film doesn't really stop, um, and I love that. It feels very much kind of like a ride. You mentioned the train scene. Everyone pretty much who loves the film has, and for good reasons, a fantastic scene. And But it builds up to that. It's just not, oh, cool fight. There's a lot of emotional weight behind it. One thing I really love in this movie, because this film is quoted a lot. There's so many iconic fight scenes. I love the characters. Um, Tobey Maguire's back at us. Peter Parker, he doesn't miss a beat. I think he's fantastic in this movie. And what I like is that Peter goes through a lot. And, I mean, it's just not all one or two things. He's having issues with his job, the iconic opening with the pizza delivery, you know, things with his relationship are a bit yikes. He stops being Spider-Man for a bit. Like, there are things in this movie that he goes through that I think future films don't do, especially the Marvel Cinematic Un Universe version of the character. I'd rather have Spider-Man go through issues and have him make all these pop culture jokes. It's just, I'm getting a bit on the side rant here, but I really like how this Spider-Man goes through issues because it's relatable and it helps the character grow and develop uh through the film um i really like alfred molina in this film as doc ock um he's in my opinion top tier villain i love his character because he has this vulnerability to him like his moments he's like ah you can tell that he doesn't want to be evil but the doc ock um technology has taken over him it's very well done if he was just evil, I don't think it would work. So I think that balance is there. Um, J. Joan, Jonah Jameson is fantastic in this movie. You really get a lot of those quotes from him. Um, I also like Donna Murphy as um, Otto's wife. I, I think she, it's not in the movie a whole ton, but she has some good moments. I think really help Doc Ock be this very menacing and iconic character. And he's my favorite villain from the Raimi films and probably my favorite Spider-Man villain but Vulture is very close from Spider-Man Homecoming so the cast is great for the most part um the thing that kind of gets me is that Harry in this film is just kind of a bit lost the fact that he's still like I hate Spider-Man for my father's death they I think the film's dragging up a bit too much uh Harry starts really strong in the in these movies but it just kind of goes downhill um I love the develop the the way this movie looks. There's some really great sets here, especially Doc Ock's lair. The soundtrack's very triumphant, and it was a film that I watched that I was always intrigued in what's going. Um, I is this the film where um Peter reveals to Aunt May of who he is? Was that the third one? I don't remember which one it is where he reveals. I can't remember off the top of my head either. I think it's this one. If it's so, um, I love that because it gives Rosemary Harris more to do as Aunt May. And that is something I do want to mention. I think Spider-Man 1, as Joe mentioned, flows better. But I think Spider-Man 2, it, you going through a ride, but sometimes that's too much. I think those are some of the lows. Sometimes I can't remember what's from Spider-Man 2 and 3, just because I think sometimes Spider-Man 2 has... Um, a bit too much going on. Um, I know there might there was might be kind of contradictions. I love the stuff, what's going on with Peter, everything's on him. But sometimes there are moments and scenes in this movie that I felt like did really re, re, did we really need that? Overall, though, um I will say this is my favorite film from the Raimi trilogy. And I would say it's my favorite Spider-Man movie. Um, I remember just after seeing it, like, wow. You know, I really see why people love it. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add on to this 
uh, film, Joe? Um, I think the only thing I could think of is just a couple of the low points or some of the relationship stuff isn't isn't the best in terms of writing, in my opinion. And I also feel like uh, some of the it feels like things just keep getting worse and worse for Peter to an almost comical level, which I'm sure was the intention. But it feels a little bit just over the top for me at some points. But yeah, overall, I really like this movie. I would give it a nine out of ten. Same, same score as the first one so I think they're both I like both one and two for different reasons but I feel they're both about the same in terms of being really good yeah one thing I do want to mention is how I feel like Sam Raimi really plays to the actor strengths like Alfred Molina before this film I'm looking at his you know filmography he was in some it seems like more kind of serious dramatic movies like Coffee and Cigarettes and Frida and movies like that. And I like how in this role, Doc Ock is um, a bit more of a dramatic role. I think Raimi just has this fantastic ability to be goofy and very comic book like, but he can also be very dramatic. And I really think that's um, felt in this movie. I'll go 9.5 out of 10 for this film. I do like it more than the first one because I feel like it just kind of goes a bit more in the upward direction. And now we have the third. And final Sam Raimi movie, uh, that is Spider-Man 3. This film was released in 2007. Um, has some new characters and cast in this, such as Venom, Sandman, and others enter the scene. Uh, Joe, if you want to say your film on the, your thoughts on the final Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. So this movie is definitely, I feel, it, at least when it first came out, was very controversial and... I don't want to say hated, but there are definitely some people that hated it. I feel like over time, people have come to appreciate it more, but it definitely still has its haters. I don't think it's as good as one or two, but I still think it's a pretty good movie. Uh, you can definitely feel some of the uh, studio interference, especially from Avi Arad, who kind of forced... Sam Raimi to put Venom in the movie and it definitely feels it feel Venom kind of feels out of place in general to me for this movie like I don't mind I think the black suit is fine but just shoving Venom in there too feels like kind of a waste of the character but in terms of other new characters I while I think the the retcon of making Sandman uh, Uncle Ben's actual killer is a little wonky uh, Thomas Hayden Church does a really good job playing Sandman, making him uh, sympathetic, but also, uh, I don't want to say evil, but villainous. Um, he also gets some, some additional scenes in the editor's cut of Spider-Man 3, which I think is a slightly better version of this movie because it adds a little more to Sandman's character arc and changes a couple scenes towards the end for the better. But yeah, and you can't talk about this movie without talking about some of the uh, the the symbiote or emo Peter Parker scenes, which I think I think they're fine. I mean, I it, enough's been said about those scenes that it's like you can't really add that much. They don't really bother me that much, so I can see why people find them cringy. But I think there is definitely some some good scenes in this movie. The 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 ending in particular. So one change that the editor's cut makes is that instead of the butler telling Harry that um, it was it wasn't Spider Man's fault that his dad died, uh, Harry instead sees like a broken picture frame of him. Uh, Peter and Mary Jane and he kind of makes the decision to go help Peter all on his own which I think is a little bit of a stronger uh, character arc and then uh, Harry's death regardless of what you think of New Goblin I think Harry's death scene is very well done in this movie and everything from that scene to the to the very end with Peter and Mary Jane is just really well done All right, Joe, do you have any, uh, anything else to add? 
do you want me to give my final score or do you want me to wait on that? I, I, I have a pretty long range, so I was just wondering if you have anything else to say. Um, I guess I'll just say that I think this movie gets more hate than it deserves. It's definitely not a perfect movie. It's not the best of the Sam Raimi trilogy, in my opinion. However, I do enjoy it for, for what it is and think it's a pretty good movie in general. Okay, so, okay, here we go, everyone. So, Spider-Man 3, I annoys me, to be honest, of how much this movie gets hate. Uh, this movie was shown in my Bad Movies Club, club that I saw, uh, that I t- saw you know, I attended in high school. You know, this Bad Movie Club, we saw films like Sharknado, um, just other terrible films like that. And then Spider-Man 3 was included, which for me is insane. I think Spider-Man 3 is not perfect, but there's so many things that make me mad that people thrash upon this movie. The first one being that, oh, the stuff with emo Peter Parker is cringy when he's dancing. Well, because it's supposed to be. The, the whole thing of this movie is that, you know, the symbiote turns Peter, Peter bad. You know, Peter, uh, you know, he's just being this jerk. As uh, Spider-Man, he almost kills Sandman in one fight in the movie that I think is really intense. You know, he's being up on people. This is not the same character we used to see the two movies ago. And that's supposed to be the point. We're supposed to not really like what's going on here. So when people are like, man, him dancing is cringy or, or whatever, it's supposed to be. And it's very effective. The fact that people don't like it, it works the film's favor so that whole thing just really kind of gets to me um if you mention that the scenes are cringy as a negative for this movie you're just not understanding the goal of sam raimi second point i want to make is venom i actually really like venom in the movie uh topher grace i think is a really good choice i like him in that 70s show and in that film or in that show you know he's kind of this dorky teenager guy kind of like how Peter Parker is. And I think that Venom for me, and this is something I could understand kind of being a bit misconstrued, is that Venom for me, I I like him when he's the opposite evil version of Spider-Man. Him quipping a thousand times with Tom Hardy, okay, that's fine. But I like him when he's this scary villain. I actually kind of like Venom in the movie. I think Eddie is his parallel to Peter, and Eddie Brock shows the audience this is what Peter can become if he continues with the symbiote. I think he's actually good in the movie. His design is a bit scary. And I think overall Venom is someone who in the film I like. For me, what feels really forced is the new Goblin with Harry. As mentioned before, the whole plot line of Harry blaming Peter gets a bit ridiculous. And the new Goblin suit looks really bad in my opinion i just don't think it works and um the whole mind wipe thing just doesn't work i love the ending and joe i like how he touched on that that for me never just i don't think harry works in this movie the death scene onward is great but the first part i don't like uh thomas hayden church is the third reason why i really like this movie he's fantastic uh sandman um joe i like how you mentioned that um there's this quote Thomas Hayden Church on Sandman, he said, villains with a conscious have the sad realization of who they are and the monster they've become. There's a sense of regret. So at the end of these movies, there's a dramatic resonance that really stays with the audience. And I love that. I like the way Sandman's portrayed. I think what this movie should have been is, is Harry maybe just, I don't know, you can't kill him off early, but I think Sandman should have become a bigger presence in the movie maybe set him up in the second one a bit and then uh, bring in Venom like you did. I think that would have been a bit better. Um, One thing I do not like, um, because I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10. I I think the other two films are better. Uh, Gwen Stacy just doesn't work. Bryce Dallas Howard is really talented, but in this movie, I don't think she works. I kind of forget Gwen Stacy's in the movie. And you might be saying, well, she's in there to have you know, um, a wedge, you know, drive a wedge between Mary 
and Peter, but I think they should have done more. I do like James Cromwell as Captain George Stacy. Um, I do think he has a good presence. Um, Aunt May is good in the movie. J.K. Simmons is great, as always. I just, it really annoys me. The thing that I, I was telling Joe this earlier is that if you don't like the movie, that's fine, but it's people's reasoning that gets me. I think a lot of people, the stuff people bash on is like, oh, Peter's cringy dancing was supposed to be. That's kind of the point of the film. Um, I also do want to mention Bruce Campbell's cameos in these movies. That's something we haven't touched on, but he cameos because he has a close relationship to Sam Raimi. They're good friends. So that was neat to see. Um, Dylan Baker. Baker's also in this film as Dr. Kirk Connors. You know, if Spider-Man 4 happened with Connors turned into the lizard, we don't know. But yeah, I just feel like that this movie is really um, underrated. I love the fight scenes. As you can see on screen, Spider-Man fighting Sandman. That's a really cool moment in the film. I like the other fight with Symbiote, Spider-Man. Fighting Sandman is a very brutal fight. I just, you know, the, the film's not the best Spider-Man movie, but for me, it gets a, a lot of hate, and it just kind of drives me nuts. I prefer this film more than Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, I do like Homecoming better than this movie, but I like this movie than both of the Sony ones. So, Joe, I know that was a lot to say, but if you want to uh, say your thoughts to what I say and kind of where you, if you agree with me or not. Yeah, I'd say I agree with you that this movie definitely gets too much hate. I can understand where people are coming from, but overall, I definitely think this movie gets way too much uh, bad mouthing about it. I do want to add that I think the uh, a good number of the fight scenes and the uh, special effects still look really good in this movie. Mm-hmm. Some Some of them look a little bit green screened at times, but I think overall, you can definitely feel the... Uh, how effects have improved since the first movie, and it, you can really feel it in this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I get... Go ahead. I get, like, if people don't like this movie. I just feel like it's getting some respect now, which is nice. I just feel like, you know, I came into the film with low expectations. That could be it. I came in with low expectations, and maybe that's why I liked it. I, I, if you're someone who doesn't like the movie... I'll say rewatch it in the lens of, okay, this is what the filmmaker is trying to do. If you still don't like it, that's fine. But I think seeing it from Sam Raimi's vision, I think um, is something that helped me enjoy the movie more. So for, for, uh, for my final score, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. Okay. I would go eight out of 10. So um anyways um before we move on to the sony ones i do want to hear your thoughts joe real quick on if spider-man 4 were to be something for me personally i think this film ends really well i love the somber-ish ending of spider-man 3 that's something i i I do want to mention is that the film is not all happy it's kind of a bit sad but simple yet nice i think it really concludes the trilogy well um if Spider-Man 4 were to be made, I don't know. It would have been interesting to see. Um, there are rumors of John Malkovich to play the Vulture, which would have been interesting. That would have really been interesting casting. Um, would the list have appeared? I don't know. Uh, you know, there were also talks about Anne Hathaway would be playing Felicia Hardy, which is very kind of funny because Anne Hathaway went on to play Catwoman in The Dark Knight Rises. So I don't know. Spider-Man 4 would have been cool to see Sam Raimi going back again. And obviously, as um, you know, I, I really like all three of these films, but I don't know. I think the film's ends, the film ends pretty good at where it is and concludes the trilogy. I'd rather see The Amazing Spider-Man 3 than this uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4 because I think the three films wrap up very nicely and tell a good story. I think I mostly agree with you. I would definitely watch Spider-Man 4 if they ever decided to come out with one or if there's something else, some other movie that continues Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man story. 
I would be fine with that. However, at the same time, I think having this more somber ending for three with no final swing, it feels almost conclusive to the trilogy. Uh, even if it wasn't intended to be the last movie in the trilogy, it kind of feels like an ending. So I'm, for the most part, fine with it being the last Tony McGuire Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I mean, if they made one, I would be happy and I would like it. It's just not something I want to see or really need to see. But I do get why people would want to see it. Before we move on, because I don't have a ton to say about the Sony films. Joe, if they made Spider-Man 4, 5, or 6 with, you know, the same cast, you know, new cast members. But if they weren't directed by Sam Raimi, how would you feel? Hmm, that's a good question. Like Personally, for, I go ahead. For me, you know, Spider Man four or five, even a sixth one, these actors and actresses would have gone into the point where they would have been very comfortable with the roles. You know, Kirsten Dunst, who I really like as Mary Jane in all three films, I think she's fantastic. She would have been great. Toby Maguire's Peter Parker, you know, everyone would have been great. I don't know. I feel like that um, Raimi just has a great vision. So I think they would have been very subpar sequels. I think if that happened, one and two would have been great. Three would have been this, you know, up and down between fans. And I think four and five would be not as good. That's kind of how I see it going, in my opinion. Yeah, personally, I feel you kind of need Sam Raimi to, if you're making a full movie with these characters, I think you kind of need Sam Raimi back. Just because his style and his tone is perfect for that universe. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, and then, you know, there's obvious thing, you know, what if Tobey Maguire appears in Spider-Man No Way Home? Um, that's a whole nother question. I'll say it'll be cool. It'll, it'll be cool to see Toby return in the movie. Um, you know, we haven't seen a trailer or anything, so it's hard to get speculation. For me, um, I think it'll be nice for him to be on the screen again because there's a lot of people, including us, who love the films, right? Um, and I think... Even if he's in, not in the movie that much, let's say he's in only in like 10, 15 minutes, I still think that'll be better than uh, nothing. So that's kind of how I view that whole uh, situation. I think there would be something cool seeing Toby, Andrew, and Tom all at the screen at once because there's fans of each of the, the films. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's something I do want to mention with the Spider-Man movies. They're very different. Like the, Spy- the Raimi films are different than the Sony ones. The Sony ones have their own feel compared to the MCU ones. That's kind of a unique thing about Spider-Man. I guess Superman has that with Man of Steel and the Christopher Reeves ones. But like Batman, you kind of have the Dark Knight trilogy and then really a Ben Affleck one. I guess there's the Keaton ones. But I feel like that the Spider-Man movies are way more distinct. So we're going to transition to the Amazing Spider-Man films 1 and 2. Um, Joe, I know you're kind of eh on these movies, so I am going to start with The Amazing Spider-Man, I believe released in 2012. Again, I saw it for the first time last summer, so um, what I did basically last summer was I saw Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and the first two Amazing Spider-Man films in like a two-month stretch. Very cool experience. I think The Amazing Spider-Man 1 has some nice moments. I enjoyed watching it. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's a nice movie. I really like Andrew Garfield as the character. There's this one quote. I don't remember word for word, but someone's like the character of Peter Parker is he's an outcast. Back then, being a nerd was an outcast. But now that pop culture is more heavily influenced, being a nerd, words, nerds are more, you know, included. So they're like making Peter Parker in this film kind of socially introverted as wikipedia puts it i think fits the character more for the setting i think andrew garfield i like him as peter um toby mcguire was very kind of nervous and quiet we saw that grow i think andrew garfield is um a bit more emotional and a bit more kind of complainy so there are differences between the two versions of peter parker andrew garfield is a really great actor um i really like him and the social network. Um, I've heard Hacksaw Ridge is really great. He's just in a lot of really great movies. And I think that he is a really great actor in this film. 
Um, I like Spider-Man, you know, the suit I really like in this amazing Spider-Man one. I know that's not very popular. I get why people don't like it. I don't know. For me, it kind of fits. And, you know, you have the quipping. So I, I think that Spider-Man in this film is pretty good. I think, you know, Spider-Man in the costume, in the suit is my second favorite version of the character on screen. Toby's Spider-Man's first, Tom's is third. So uh, you also have Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. And like Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone's a fantastic actress. I really love her as the character of Gwen Stacy. I think her and Andrew have great chemistry. They really just, um, they just really banter off each other well and they build off each other as well in terms of characters. They help each other develop through the movie, which is really great. I think both Kirsten Dunst and Emma Stone are really great in both of these Spider-Man films. I think both are very underrated and I think they should get more respect because I really like the character of Gwen Stacy in his first film. Um, yeah, I'm going to probably not say this correctly. We have Reese Ifans as Kirk Connor, a.k.a. The Lizard, who I do like. He's not the best, but he's not terrible. I like more the sympathy side. They try to kind of do a mixture of Doc Ock and Norman from the Raimi films. And I do like that. The design is not the best. As the viewers can see, here's an image from the comics. I would have liked more of a pronounced snout look. But overall, I don't know. I, I, I like the lizard. Him spraying gas around the city is a bit too cheesy. But for the most part, I like him. Dennis Leary, I really like as Captain George Stacy. I think there's a lot of good moments with him. And Dennis Leary has that presence that you want. Like, okay, let's get Spider-Man. I really like that. Um, I really like um, both um, Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben and Sally Field as Aunt May. Uh, Cliff Robertson nails Uncle Ben in the Raimi films, but I think in this film, Martin Sheen does a good job as the character. I feel like Uncle Ben in the Raimi films is more of kind of that inspiring version of the character, while Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben in this film feels more kind of like a father figure. Um, Sally Field, I think, is my perfect or I think it's the perfect version of Aunt May on the big screen. She has the wisdom and advice. So you have that side, but she, there's a lot of human moments with her and Peter. Although like the films feel, people say it's like the Dark Knight of Spider-Man films. It's not too gritty. So I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that um, comparison. The movie feels very small scale, which I do like. And it seems very like, this could happen in our world. I think that when comparing this film to The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight is very much a drama, you know, of epic proportions. This film feels very much like, oh, it could happen. So I like this film. Um, Mark Webb, um, he did 500 Days of Summer, which I'm, I, I think is good. But one thing I like about that film is that's a very human story. And um, there's a lot of really great editing. and. I think that both of these two amazing Spider-Man films are really hindered by Sony. There's some great human moments with Gwen and Peter, but I just feel like this movie, Sony should have let Mark Webb have a bit more of a vision. Um, overall, that's kind of my thoughts on uh, this movie. I definitely agree with you that this movie and especially the sequel feel very much constrained by Sony and Sony's interference. Um, Mark Webb, I think is a, a good director and other stuff, but his direction doesn't really stand out that much in this movie. I think it's interesting that this movie has the screenplay by Alvin Sargent who helped write Spider-Man 2. So you still have a little bit of that. I did do the, the. I think. What's that? Oh, you're right. Alvin Sargent did do the other Spider-Man movies. I mean, yeah. I see that a bit. So I think I think him writing. He wrote this one, but he did not write two, and I think that could be one reason why this film is a lot better than two. But so anyway, I think this this movie has some good parts and some bad parts. Like I think Andrew Garfield, he does a pretty good job as Peter Parker. He's not my favorite. I think his version of Peter Parker appears a little too different from the the comic book version. 
for my tastes. But he does a good performance, and he's a really good actor in other movies. So I think he... It's a shame they didn't give him more to do as Spider-Man in these movies. Emma Stone, she does a really great job. Their chemistry is really, really great in these movies. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, the wizard in this movie. He feels very generic and kind of boring, and his plan is kind of boring. And the the character design of the lizard is kind of pretty bad, in my opinion. Uh, I think Dennis Leary did a good job as George Stacy. Uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May, they were they were well cast. But yeah, I think the the story and and plot for this movie is just a little too generic and something about this movie, I'm okay with dark Spider-Man stories, like Craven's Last Hunt is my favorite Spider-Man comic. But something about this just feels a little too a little too gritty for my taste. I don't know why. Maybe I maybe I need to rewatch it. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I think it's an it's an okay movie for what it is. It's definitely much better than the sequel. What about this film is dark and gritty to you? It definitely the atmosphere I think is more realistic, but there's nothing like I think to the love of the dark knight in this movie. So I'm like, what do you think is dark or gritty about it? See, that's the thing. That's why I'm not really sure what it is that makes it feel that way to movie to me. Just something about the the tone and feel of the movie. Like, I don't know if it's the cinematography and kind of style, the way it's shot, but something about that realism just makes it a little too gritty feeling for me. I can kind of, I don't know. For me, there's enough in this film to have it be not too much. Like, you have that scene where Peter saves the kid, which is a fantastic Spider-Man moment. I, I see what you mean, but it never bothered me. I know people are really bothered by this one scene of Spider-Man. He's stopping this car thief. He's like webbing him up. He's like taunting him. And people are like, oh my goodness, that's too much. I'm like, he doesn't kill him. He doesn't even really badly injure him. He kind of just does the Spider-Man clips. And I just, I think honestly, this film is worth a rewatch. I do see though, the complaints about the lizard. Yeah, the plan I do not like. I like the buildup. I just think it fails in execution. Um, I like the score though. Um, there's, there's uh, James Horner does a good job. Um, I will agree that the cinematography could be better. This is a film that I saw. I liked it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. But I'm not going to rewatch um, anytime soon. Um, I think there's some good scenes here, like when Peter's having dinner with the Stacy family and they're arguing about Spider Man. That's a really good look at the character. I'll probably go seven for this movie, maybe seven point five. Um, uh, it does have its issues for sure, and I think Joey did a good job pointing that out. Um, I just think that this film has some um good moments in it for me to give it a, a good score. I'd give it a six out of ten personally. I, I can see that. Do you have any um rebuttal to what I said or any thoughts on that? Not really, not that I can think of. All right, I, I will say that I, I think this film is definitely um, worth a rewatch. I also think the CGI does not hold up too well, especially with the lizard. Um, I guess another question is, would you say that you prefer Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man over this character? Yes. Okay. I, I, can, I can see that. Um, and a big reason I can, I can see that is because The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is not a good movie. Um, this film gets a lot of hate. Unlike Spider-Man 3, I'm not going to defend it. I agree with a lot of people. This is a, a bad movie. Um, there's a lot going on. It's just a very boring film. I think one thing that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is that it tries to do the Spider-Man 2 out with Sam Raimi, where, <clears throat> excuse me, where there's a lot going on, right? Uh, and, you know, then that movie works because a lot of the stuff in Spider-Man 2, the Raimi version, is, oh, on Peter's life. There's a lot of stress and trouble going on. I think in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, a lot of the stuff that's going on doesn't really relate to Peter. It doesn't work out that well. Andrew Garfield's trying his best. I still like him as the character. Um, I like Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. A lot of big events happen to her, and I think 
for the most part, it's, it's handled well. But we're really bothered with this movie down is the villains. A lot of time is spent on Electro in this movie. And I love Jamie Foxx as an actor. I, I love him in Soul. But in this movie, he's wasted. I don't like him as Max Dillon. And as the Electro, he doesn't work for me. Um, the design is weird. And a lot of this movie is Electro just walking around and not really doing a whole ton. In the other films, even the Amazing Spider-Man 1, they were developing the villains here. They're really not doing so. So that really bogs it down. There's a lot of unnecessary time designated to him. Dane DeHaan, I haven't seen none of the movies. Uh, it seems like he... Oh, he's in Chronicle. Okay, he, he's done some more drama stuff. But him and his Harry Osborn. Harry's just way too rushed in this movie. Um, and, you know, you get introduced to Harry and then he turns into G Green Goblin money and way too rushed. Um, um, you have a lot of stuff going to Peter's parents which I just think is really weird. And like, there are spies and stuff. It just doesn't work. Um, the rhinos in this movie, Paul Giamatti is a great actor, but again, he, like Jamie Foxx, he's wasted in the role because there's just nothing for them to do that's interesting. I think a lot of the amazing Spider-Man 2 feels very bloated because none of it really adds up. Uh, the Peter spy, you know, his parents, that doesn't work. A lot of the villain screen time is not built developing the characters, it's just them doing random stuff that you don't really care about. And there's just, the film flows very weird. Like you have this montage where you you know, Peter being Spider-Man, which is cool, but then you have these long drawn out scenes. I think this film is just very much hindered by the Sony trying to push everything. People say there's a lot of setup. I disagree. Felicity Jones does play Felicia Hardy, but... She's only in there one or two scenes. I just think this movie, a lot of the stuff that is shown is not what should be. I think that we should have had more scenes of Peter and Harry, see more of um, Max Dillon before he becomes Electro, go more human so that way it can pay off. But ultimately, it does itself no build up, there's uh, no payoff in this film. You called this movie bloated, and I think that's probably the best way to describe it. The script by uh, Alex Kurtzman and R Roberto Orti and a couple other people just feels much weaker in comparison to all the other Spider-Man movies. And there's there's so many things in this movie that seem like they're going to do something and then nothing really happens. Like a lot of things just kind of lead to nowhere. Uh, the villains are pretty weak. Like you said, I like Jamie Foxx and other stuff. I really like him in Collateral, Miami Vice, Django Unchained, Soul. But he just feels very, I don't want to say underutilized because they use him a lot in this movie, but I just don't think it's, he's very well utilized. Uh, same thing with Rhino. Not a fan of Dane DeHaan as Green Goblin, though it sounds like he's a better actor in other movies, but I feel like he wasn't used very well here. Uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, I feel like, try their best, but overall, I just think this movie is probably the, the weakest Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I think Spider-Man Far From Home, we haven't gone over it, but I do have issues with it, but I do think this is a worse film. Even the practical stuff, like, the Times Square scene just doesn't work for me because I'm not interested in the villains. Like, the production of it and the special effects... Yeah, it's better, but I just, I'm not really caring that much. Um, I think there's not a lot else to say. Um, I'm going to give this film a 5 out of 10. Um, just a very blah movie for me. Joe, if you want to give your final thoughts and grade. Uh, I don't have much else to say, but one thing I do want to mention is I do really like the Spider-Man suit in this movie. I think it's one of my favorite Spider-Man suits in general. It's kind of a shame it's stuck in one of the worst Spider-Man movies. But I would give this a 4 out of 10. It's just not that good of a movie, in my opinion. Yeah, the score is good, though. Um, pretty good stuff. So, um, the score being the musical score, but not a good movie. I do want to talk about some of the kind of the canceled um, projects for Sony's feature of Spider-Man. So, I would have loved to see an amazing Spider-Man 3. I feel like this movie does not end, you know, it was, you know, expecting a third film. So it just kind of halts to it. And then you're like, okay, I'd love to see a third one. I think that would have been great. 
Um, there's a Sinister Six movie, which I don't think would have worked. Um, the Sinister Six, I think, work great when they're going up against Spider-Man and seeing how they can, you know, work together, you know, to take him down, you know. And, you know, a Sinister Six movie, I think, would have been weird with Spider-Man been in it. You just have this villainous team. I know that works in some other stuff. I don't think it would have worked here. Um, I feel like just I would have liked to see the Amazing Spider-Man 3 Black Cat was up in this movie. You know, um, Felicity Jones' Felicia Hardy would have been cool to see. Um, I would love to see the lit, um, not the lizard, my bad, um, Doc Ock in this universe because it's these, um, movies are a bit more science based. But yeah, I would have liked to see a bit more. But kind of what happened to my understanding is that, um, you know, oh, you know, we got Spider Man the MC, which I do like. We'll talk about that more. But, um, there also wasn't like the amazing Spider Man 3 would have included Peter trying to recover Gwen from her death. And like kind of people like bringing back from the dead. And if the film did that, I would not like to see it. But I think there was potential of Mark Webb in this cast to make a good third installment. I don't have much to add, but I agree with you that these movies that they announced could have been interesting, but I didn't have a ton of hope for them. Yeah, I would love to see Andrew Garfield coming back and um Spider-Man No Way Home. I think that would be cool to see him, hopefully in a, hopefully in a good movie. Well, anyways, everyone, that'll do it for the five um, non-MC Spider-Man films. Overall, I think for the most part, they're good, and it's cool to see the character taken in different directions. Um, I thought this would be a good video to do before we get into MCU Spider-Man, kind of where we stand on the character. But Joe, uh, thanks for joining me. And until then, we'll see you all next time. Um, unless, Joe, you have any uh, finishing thoughts to add? Nope, I'm all good. All right, everyone, have a good one and take care.